Are you feeling torn between two choices, uncertain of which way God is calling you? What if straddling the fence isn't as safe as it seems? I know we want to play both sides out to see which is the best option. So in today's episode, we're talking about the story of Solomon, a man of wealth, wisdom, and yet divided devotion. Let's get into it. If you're new here, I'm Emily. I'm a certified Christian life and business coach. You are on the Thought Vault podcast right now. So make sure you hit subscribe so we can stay connected. I talk all things relatable Christian life, entrepreneurship, and anything in between because this world is crazy and we need community. Make sure to stay connected to us. So I know what it feels like to stand on the edge of being between two worlds. Trying to balance the demands of motherhood and entrepreneurship has been this tug and pull that I've experienced for over a decade now. Trying to figure out what God wants me to do, in what order, at what pace. It's been undeniable that God has had a calling on my life to talk and express myself, hence this podcast, and me going on to get certified in life coaching and all these other things that I've done. And it's always been a struggle to figure out what is the timing? What is the pace? What what am I supposed to be doing? Because not all things come together perfectly in life, right? And I know what it feels like to want to have meaning behind your life, what it want to do in trying to build a legacy and build a life of purpose. As Christians, we're called to live a purposeful life because our life is purposeful. It's for God's glory. So trying to figure out how to be present, how to make the best decisions has always been a struggle of mine. I'd wrestle with thoughts like, am I selfish for wanting to pursue this dream when I know my kids and being a mother is the highest calling of my life? How am I going to find time to do what God is calling me to do? How do I squelch this for the time being and maybe wait for a time later down the road when it fits better? I've talked about these things at nauseum because these are struggles that myself has gone through and all of my clients, every single one of my clients is struggling with the balance of the responsibilities their life entails and trying to figure out that happy medium or the right cadence with which to pursue stuff and change and pivot and be willing to trust God in the unknown. It's just a whole thing. Some days I dive into my coaching work and feel on fire with purpose and joy and just exhilarated for what God is doing in that segment of my life, but then turn around the next day and feel super guilty that I wasn't doing enough at home. Some days I find myself shelving my dreams completely and being completely burnt out, convincing myself that everything just needs to stop. Wait, I need to say no to everything and just be focused on one thing, just my kids, just being at home. But I knew this whole time that God has been calling me to figure out what is most important, has been part of my faith journey and one that I have taken on as a call on my life to grow closer to the Lord. How is me straddling the fence between these two parts of my life drawing me closer to God and I've made it my mission to figure this out and to be focused on God above the two sides of the fence. It's been exhausting, it's been life-giving, and it's shaped me into a new person that I'm becoming. And just like two different lives, they never quite land fully together. Like it's never a super copacetic lifestyle. And maybe you find yourself in that same place. It just hit me one day. Like I can't grow into what God has planned. If I keep straddling the fence, feeling like, okay, I can do this day, do that day, split my day in half, split my hours in half. Like there's not two of me. There's one of me. And so God was calling me to stop dividing my heart and step in to the work that he had set before me. He wasn't asking me to be perfect. He was just asking me to have my heart focused on him above the ambitions of my soul because ultimately my expectations were rooted in my own flesh and my own desires for what I felt was the best plan for my life. But to follow him is entirely different. To be focused solely on God is entirely different than straddling the fence. I needed to figure out how to be planted in his promises and not my own ideal. Maybe you can relate to that. Maybe you felt you've felt torn between where you are now, where God is leading you. Today I want you to explore the story of Solomon with me, a man who wrestled with the same tension of living divided. How his story teaches us the importance of making a clear choice to follow God and do it with everything that we've got. So 
what does straddling the fence really mean? It's like this indecision and that we feel like the indecision is buying us time and keeping us safe and giving us options because no one wants to be hemmed into one thing. No one wants to have all our eggs in one basket and then that basket drop and all the eggs shatter. In reality though, straddling the fence is truly living stuck, being stuck between two paths. It completely delays our growth. It delays our transformation. It's delaying what God ultimately wants us to do. We have big eyes and it's like when you go to the grocery store, you buy way too much when you're hungry versus if you just go with your list and stick to it. Solomon's struggle is one that so many of us can relate to, serving both God and the idols of our flesh, embracing wisdom, but ignoring God's warnings. Ouch. So do you ever feel like you're building your life on purpose? Do you ever feel like you're building your life on promises one day and then falling back into old habits the very next? It's exhausting and it pulls us further from God and keeps us distracted, which is a stronghold that Satan can use to dig us into a state of malaise, apathy, and stuckness. So we're breaking free from that today. How can we learn from the Solomon story? Let's get into it. Lesson number one is God's commands are clear. Fence straddling leads to division. I'm going to read a section out of Deuteronomy 17, 14 through 20. Hang with me because it points exactly to the story of Solomon, what's going on in the context of it. When you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you and have taken possession of it and settled in it, and you say, let us set a king over us like all the nations around us, be sure to appoint over you a king the Lord your God chooses. He must be from among your fellow Israelites. Do not place a foreigner over you or he is not or one who is not an Israelite. The king, moreover, must not acquire great numbers of horses for himself or make the people return to Egypt to get more of them. For the Lord has told you are not to go back that way again. He must not make many wives or his heart will be led astray. He must not accumulate large amounts of silver and gold. When he takes the throne of his kingdom, he is to write for himself on his scroll a copy of this law taken from that of the Levitical priest. It is to be with him and he is to read it all the days of his life so that he may learn to revere the Lord his God and follow carefully all of the words of this law and these decrees. Solomon knew there was a clear set of instructions for his life. He had it perfectly written out. Would you not just love a business plan or a life plan from the Lord? Here it is. Do all this and you'll be happy in my eyes. We'll be copacetic. It will be a great partnership for your whole life and kingdom. And you don't have to worry about anything adverse occurring because you are following this perfectly played out, laid out set of plans. Lord, I would love that type of plan for my life. <laughs> Solomon knew this and he ignored them. Okay, we're going to see in the coming, we're going to see coming up just how much Solomon tried to straddle the fence. We know God's commands. We all do. We know what he expects of us, but we allow distractions and excuses to keep from obeying them faithfully. Lesson number two is this. A divided heart brings destructive consequences. Let's go on to read 1 Kings chapter 11, 3 and 6 through 8. He, Solomon, had 700 wives of royal birth and 300 concubines. Okay, that man was busy. And his wives led him astray, just like God told him they would. So Solomon did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He did not follow the Lord completely, as David his father had done. On a hill east of Jerusalem, Solomon built a high place for Jamshah, the detestable god of Moab, and for Malak, the detestable god of the Ammonites. He did the same for all of his foreign wives who burned incense and offered sacrifices to their gods. So he pretty much did exactly what God said he should not do. And what would happen if he did employ those things? If he did have a lot of wives, his heart was going to go astray. He was going to start serving other people than God. And that was unbelievable. When you read the story of Solomon, when you read the story of his father, David, like you're like, okay, these people have got to understand this now. Like they've got to get the picture. Follow God, obey his laws, be understanding of what he's called you to do. And life will be better for you. But they never learned the lesson. And so Solomon didn't do that. Solomon's heart became completely divided, loyal to God, but drawn to the worldly temptations, drawn to the life of his wives. His kingdom was completely torn apart, just as our lives unravel when we try to serve two masters. We can't do it. Where are you seeing signs of division in your heart or your life? Where is your mind constantly trying to play both sides, trying to get the angle just right? How are you manipulating yourself into thinking like this is the safe space? to do this, to do it this way. And you know that this guttural intrinsic thing inside of you, God's voice, Holy Spirit, telling you this 
is not right. This doesn't feel good. This isn't what is supposed to be. That is God's calling on your heart. You need to take heed to that. How are you serving two masters? Is your love of money and your need to have material things overriding the desire to get you out of that job, to get you out of that career so you have a better life or you go down a path that God's been calling you to, but you keep ignoring because it'll make you too uncomfortable? What is it? What are the things that are bothering you? Let's talk further. Maybe we'll get some clarity. The lesson number three is this. Clarity comes when we see God's heart with all of ours. Not a piece of our heart, but when we see God fully. In 1 Kings, again, in chapter 10, 28, 29, Solomon's horses were imported from Egypt and from Q. The royal merchants purchased them for Q at the current price. They imported a chariot from Egypt for 600 shekels of silver and a horse for 150. They also exported them to all the kings of the Hittites and the Armenians. Even in small compromises can lead to a bigger disobedience. Solomon's heart was pulled in so many different directions because he didn't fully seek God's will. He was buying horses, trading horses, getting chariots, making sure, pouring into the economy of other kingdoms by buying these things and trading them. It didn't seem like a big deal. I mean, we all need chariots. We all need horses. But God specifically said, don't collect these things. Don't make this a business. Don't make this a priority. When we turn to God and seek him wholeheartedly, we find clarity. We find peace. We find the simple path. I spoke earlier, wouldn't it be great if God gave us just this plan? Okay, the plan is to follow God and to be focused on him. Because in whatever circumstance you're facing, if you're so solely focused on God, if your heart and your mind are focused on God, he's going to reveal to you what is of importance right now in your life. What is the focus and how that's going to play out and ripple into the other areas of your life. So, you know, as a mom, self-sacrifice is the name of the game. Nothing has brought me closer to understanding the Lord than becoming a mother. And I fully believe that was a huge piece of why God made me a mom. It, it, it was to sanctify me. And who knows what else is to come from this because it's going to be a lifelong journey being a mother and it's the greatest thrill and responsibility and everything of my life. And he also placed in me callings on my heart to do things, but I have to figure out where is God's focus for me in this season and how do I balance that? The reality is I need to wake up every day focused on God, focus on what he has set before me. And that is what I go at with all my heart in Jesus's name. So it, I don't have to have this master plan and my life is not going to look perfect. But the perfect plan is to simply follow him because that reveals to us what do we need to focus on? What is it that we need to pray over, give attention to? Setting our cadence to God's is very hard. We live in a world of instant gratification, instant downloads, instant purchases, instant everything. And God's cadence is very different, very different. His pace is holy and divine. And it's hard to marry our expectations with that. But when we do, our life is full and content and clear with peace. And that is a gift given above anything else. If there's anything I could have in life, it would be to be content, honestly. How do we go on from this? How do we get off this fence? Identify where you're straddling the fence. Like make a list. Where? What are the things that keep coming up that are rolling around in your brain? What are decisions that you keep feeling like you're having to decide between? Or it's just this weight. I've got to make a decision on this. I just, I haven't pulled the trigger yet. I haven't done it yet. Why? Make the list of those things. You need to see them. You need to be in prayer over them. The second thing to do is to search God's word because the word of God is living. It is always revealing truth to us. It is the living word of God. So at any point that you read scripture, you're going to reap fruit from that. You're going to have a harvest from that because God is speaking to you. So take God's word and read through it. Pray about that specifically. God, please let this word give me discernment and wisdom. Pray specifically over what you're facing and then read scripture and see how God reveals himself to you in that scripture. Every single time I've been intentional about this, I always have a peace and a sense of clarity, whether to table something, whether to say no to something, whether to take a break, to move forward, to go full force. All of these things, I can point back to a time when God blatantly spoke to me through prayer, through reading his word through the voice of another fellow believer who I've confided in and asked for prayer from. Their word from him to me is a gift and God is present and God is with you. So the third thing would be is to decide 
with God's help, right? So now you can have a clarity of God's word written on your heart. You can have an understanding of what he's wanting you to focus on. And now you make a decision. Every decision is not a perfect decision. Every decision that grows you closer to God, which is the ultimate goal, is going to require an uncomfortability. Why? Because for our flesh and for us to become more like God, something's changing. And anything that's changing is causing a level of discomfort. And we have to be okay with that. That's where our faith comes in. Faith gives us hope for the things unseen. And that gives us a confidence in trusting God. And that is a testament to our faith. That is a testament to who God is. And we get to see how that plays out. Whether it means we fail at that business venture or whether we decide to step away from a job so that we can be at home with our kids, maybe that's something you're struggling with. There's so many different ways in which we are trying to straddle the fence, trying to be Christ-like and be bearing his image and then living in our flesh because it's comfortable. The fourth thing is commit to one small action. So now that you've decided with God's help, you've read his word, you've identified your list, now you're gonna take a small action. You're gonna put action behind that faith. So this week, declare your choice. I want you to declare your choice and make that one small action. So whatever it might be, maybe it's calling somebody because you need them, they got a resource you need. Maybe it's deciding to close something down because it's not the time or the season for that. Maybe it's to say no to something so you have more time for this. You are making one small action this week. And if you're really super brave, I want you to comment below what that is. And if you're listening to this on your podcast episode, guess what? There's a phone number that you can text. You can text me questions, text me encouragement. Please don't text me negative things. That's something that God has to work on my heart. I get my feelings hurt, but text me what action you're taking this week. I would love to be in prayer over that for you and to connect with you in that way. So this is what we're doing. I want you to think about this quote. The highest reward for a person's toil is not what they get for it, but what they become by it. You can do this. You can become fully aligned with God's calling in your heart in this season. And the calling that God has you to do, the alignment that may be needed, it may not be your long-term thing, but is what is needed right now with him to grow closer to him. And that is our ultimate goal. So your circumstances are not defining you. The way you are living in those circumstances is defining you. The way God's sanctifying you through your circumstances is what is defining you. Seeking God is what is defining you in the midst of your circumstances. So no matter what you're facing right now, God is with you. He is ever present and he is calling you to him. So be focused on that one simple goal and think about that. The highest reward for a person's toil is not what they get for it, but what they become by it. How are you going to become more like Christ in this season? Being intentional, being obedient, being faithful. Solomon's downfall wasn't just poor choices. It was indecision. It was wavering between temptation and devotion. So fence straddling is exhausting. It takes up a lot of energy to play both sides, to figure out how to be the jack of all trades, but definitely the master of none. And I'm very victim to that mindset because I'm a very multi-passionate person. I can start and stop a hundred projects in a month. And that's the way my brain works. Like I'm excited to do things and I'm excited to pursue all different ideas that I have because God made me very multi-passionate like that. And that's been a huge struggle of mine because I get easily distracted. And I lose my devotion to the Lord when I am seeking out my ambition and my excitedness about stuff rather than seeking him first and knowing what the cadence is he needs me to operate in, which is very challenging. So everything does start to fall into place, though, when we are seeking him first, because that is the divine time. That is the way it's supposed to be. If we're seeking God and things are playing out, we can have trust and that this is the journey I'm on and there's purpose behind it. That's the promise we have. There's purpose in it. And all glory will be for our good, for God's glory. And he's not going to forsake us. So how can we do that today? How can you do that today? If today's episode resonated with you, I'd love to invite you to join me over on Substack. You can check the link in the show notes. It's where I share personal stories, reflections, and I share monthly tools, life coaching tools, business coaching tools to just help build this life, focus on God, 
God's calling for you and having intentionality behind your daily life so that you live a life with little regret and a heck of a lot of legacy and purpose. It's a space where we go deeper, we can grow together and just encourage each other. So hopefully you will join us over there because it is a great community and a place where we can dive deeper together into our journey of life and being Christians. And if you haven't already, again, make sure to hit the subscribe button to this podcast. I look forward to connecting with you and I don't want you to miss an episode. So I love to hear from you. Where have you been straddling the fence in your life? How are you choosing to step into God's clarity this week? Send me a DM or an email. Get up with me. I cannot wait to hear about it and pray over it for you. So until next time, do not be conformed by this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12 too. Bye for now, guys. Mm-hmm.